Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex and this month we're going to take a look at music on your Plex server. We've covered this topic many times in the past. Most recently we took a look at Plex Amp, which is their new music player that links up with your Plex server for playing your personal media library. It's a great new addition to Plex and a lot of people really like consuming their personal media library this way. I love storing media on Plex because I like to rip all of my CDs to lossless FLAC files so I get the best audio quality, especially when I've got my wired headphones wired in. And one of the new features that they just rolled out for Plex, if you are a Plex Pass subscriber, is something called Supersonic. And this will allow your Plex server to find similar tracks algorithmically. It doesn't rely on metadata or anything else like that. It will look at every track, develop a fingerprint of each track, and then see what tracks have similar fingerprints to each other and give you a way to play music that sounds very similar, either through direct selections or through algorithmically developed playlists. And we're going to take a look at how all of this works in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what Supersonic is all about. Now, before you get going with this feature, there are a few things that you have to keep in mind. The first is that you need to be, of course, on the latest version of the Plex Media Server, 1.24.0 or better. Your server must be running Mac OS, Windows, or Linux, and it does not at the moment support ARM CPUs. So if you have a NAS that's running ARM or you have an NVIDIA Shield or something running your Plex server, this feature is not going to work for you at the moment. But if you've got something running Intel, it will. But just be advised, this will take a lot of time and CPU resources to do all of the processing, especially if you have a big library. None of this is going up to the cloud. It is all happening on your server and it stays there, but it's going to take a while for that process to do its thing. Now this feature is off by default, so to enable it you have to go into your server settings and there are a couple of different options that govern how this new feature works. Now the first thing I want to point you to is your library setting in your server setting screen here. And towards the bottom when you have the new version of the Plex server installed, you're going to see this option for analyzing audio tracks for sonic features. Now, I have set mine to run as a scheduled task, which happens during your nightly server maintenance, but also when new media is added to the library. So every time I add a new album, it's gonna scan all of those tracks. And as I mentioned, it's pretty CPU intensive. So if you do have a pretty low-end Plex server, you might wanna just leave it on the default, which is as a scheduled task, and that will do that audio analysis in the middle of the night when you're likely not using your server. Now, if you want to adjust when that maintenance period takes place, you can go over to scheduled tasks here, and you can set the time. So as you can see right now, uh, my maintenance window is between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m., and that means if I had it just running the analysis during the a maintenance period, it'll only have that three hour window to process music. So it'll do whatever it can in that window and then it'll stop until the next maintenance window opens up. And the way I understand this working right now is that you won't get access to the feature on Plex Amp until it's done with the entire library. So if you've got a big library and you're only doing the scheduled maintenance here, it's probably gonna take a couple of days for it to work its way all the way through. And just to give you an idea as to how intensive this is, I had the server run on an eight core i9 gaming computer just to speed up the process a bit. And you can see that as it was going through a library of about 2000 tracks or so, we were utilizing about 70% of the CPU to do that analysis because it does have to read through every single track and develop that fingerprint individually for each one of them. Now you also have to enable the feature on the music library itself. So I've got my music library here selected. I'm going to go over to those three dots there, go to manage library and click on edit. 
that will bring up a familiar screen if you've ever done any work on your library before. And if you go over to advanced, you're going to find now Sonic Analysis is an option you can select, again, if your Plex server is up to date. And then once you do that and click save, it will then begin the work either through the maintenance period or when you add new tracks to go and sonically analyze all of the tracks in your library. Now that we've got this work done, let's take a look and see how it works. Now, one of the challenges of demoing this feature is that I can't use any copyrighted music. So what we're going to do here is pick out a few popular songs that you're probably familiar with. And if you're not, you can go on YouTube and listen to the track and get a feel for how it sounds. And what I had my Plex server do is match these popular songs to a big library of free to use music. Some of this is Creative Commons, some of this is music I purchased, and some of it comes from the YouTube music library. In total, there are about 2,000 tracks or so. And although the Plex server didn't find many matches, it did find quite a few. And I think part of the challenge is that a lot of the popular music I have has vocals, and all of this production music is all instrumental. But it still did find some really cool stuff. So let me show you uh, how this is going to work on my iPhone here. So right now I've got uh, Long View from Green Day. And again, you can pull that up on YouTube if you want to know what it sounds like. Now, if I click on the track here, I have a couple of options. One, of course, is I could play Long View. Uh, the other one is a new feature related to this sonic matching called Track Radio. And what this will do is play Long View, but then every song that sounds similar to it based on this new feature, which is pretty neat. Now, the other thing I can do here is have it show me similar tracks. And so it found that there were a couple of these production audio files that were fairly close to how Longview sounds. And it also matched it up with Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit. So, for example, if I go over here and click on Hard Hat, we'll play that real quick. And I'll turn the audio up here so you can hear. So it has kind of a similar sound, right? Uh, we can pick another one here. This one's called Sharp. I think I got this one from the YouTube library. Let's click on that one. So it's got a couple of, you know, very similar sounding songs here that came from a buyout library. Now, what you've got on the list here, and it might be hard to see, is that it will list percentages of how confident it is in that match. So you can see these titles were in the 80 percentile range, so not incredibly close, but pretty close. Let's take a look at a few others it found. All right, here's a more mellow song. This is Crash Into Me from Dave Matthews Band. I'm going to click on the track and go back to show similar tracks again. And as you can see, it found a bunch of them. Now, what's funny about this production music is that you often get different lengths. And as you can see here, it's found four different tracks that are the same song, just in different lengths. So you know that algorithm is working here. Uh, but let's take a look at uh, the shorter one here. Maybe we'll do the 30 second Simple Smiles and click play on there. And I'll pull it up for you now. So it's got a very similar uh, sound to it, doesn't it? Let's take a look at this other one called Freedom. So very similar, right? And that's kind of the gist of this, which is finding tracks that are sonically similar. Let's take a look at one more. All right, this last one is Super Mellow, a new age artist called Enya. You have undoubtedly heard her music before. Actually, if you look up this track, it will sound familiar. It ends up in a lot of commercials and other content. And if we go here to similar tracks, you can see that a lot of my production music library kind of matches uh, this song. And the top match here at 94% is one that I got from the music library that YouTube hosts. And let's click play on this. So this is one that really is very close to 
Enya's sound and a lot of these other tracks I listened to earlier and were also very close. And what's neat about this exercise is that not only can I demo it on YouTube without a copyright strike, uh, but also kind of show you that it doesn't rely on metadata here. It is looking at the sonic signature of each track through an algorithm that it's running on your server. So even though most of these tracks that I've got from YouTube and some of these CDs that I've purchased over the years have no metadata out there on the internet, it is able to match things up nicely. You can also do this matching on an album level basis too. So that could be really useful if you wanted to go through entire albums. And one thing that I really like about this feature is that because it's not relying on metadata, you can start up a playlist of music that is very sonically alike, even if it's not from the same era. I'm often bouncing between the 2000s, the 90s, and the 80s, and sometimes I'm just looking for a specific sound, and this enables that. It does require Plex Amp for it to work right now. It's built into the Plex Amp app, so the server will do the processing. Plex Amp is the consumer of that data, so it does require a Plex Pass, but this is a really neat and unique way, I think, of cataloging and consuming your music library. And now I've really got to get moving, getting the rest of my music brought into my Plex server because I've been uh, putting that off for a while, but this is kind of a motivator to start getting that work done once again. That's going to do it for this look at Supersonic from Plex. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below and how you're using it. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. And I also want to thank Plex for their long-standing support of the channel. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Jim Callagher, Hot Sauce and Video Games, and Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.